All right, so it's that time of year again. Some of my friends are starting to prepare for step one. So I thought I'd make a quick little video on some of my advice for studying for step one, especially during dedicated period. So the main thing that your step one dedicated study is going to revolve around is UFAPS. Uh, that stands for UWorld, First Aid, Pathoma, and Sketchy. The main thing here is that your number one, absolute number one priority should be UWorld. So that means even if you feel like you aren't going to make a full pass through first aid, or you're not going to catch up on all the sketchy p videos, it doesn't matter. You need to make at least one full pass through UWorld in order to make sure you can do as well as you can. So that is your number one priority. Uh, next is first aid. So it really depends on how you prefer to use it. Some people like to do a full first pass from front to end. Some people just like to use first aid as a reference. I'd say you should do whatever you feel like is most useful for you. For me personally, I did one full pass uh, and I made flashcards throughout and I thought it was pretty useful, but there really is a lot of information that's sort of low yield in there. So I wouldn't stress too much about remembering every single little detail. They're very comprehensive. But again, some of the details are kind of not the highest yields. Pathoma, I recommend everybody doing Pathoma if you have time. Uh, Dr. Sitar is an excellent lecturer and he explains concepts and other things very, very well. So I say that everybody should be doing Pathoma and that's why it's part of this UFAPS uh, mnemonic. And then for Sketchy, everyone needs to do Sketchy Micro. Okay. Everybody needs to be doing that. Um, I would say for farm, it was very useful for me. And I would say it would be useful for a lot of people, but it's not mandatory. So it's pretty good. Let's just put a lot of checks for Sketchy Micro. Sketchy Farm is a couple of checks. And then I also liked Path myself, but it would not be unexpected to know that the, the quality of the Path videos is not as good as how high yield the videos up in Sketchy Micro are, for example. So if you have time and you enjoy the format of Sketchy, I would highly suggest doing Path, but the only really mandatory one that you need to be doing is Sketchy Micro. So uh, in general, just some tips for you world. You need to do at least one full pass at minimum, as I mentioned earlier. And if you are not doing that, then you are not doing absolutely everything you can to make sure you get the best score for your step one exam. The next thing is you should do all of your blocks as 40 questions, random and timed. I had some uh, classmates of mine who did not choose to do random and they didn't want to focus on their weak spots early on because they hadn't reviewed them yet in first aid. And I think that is the wrong way to do it. You want to use UWorld and really figure out what your biggest weak spots are. So as you're going through your world, you're going to keep getting the same types of questions wrong over and over again. And that's going to cue you to go through first aid and really strengthen yourself on that area. And by doing this, you're going to be patching up your weak spots as early as possible. And those are going to be the highest yield spots for you to be studying. So I highly recommend doing random timed. Uh, the timed will also help you a lot for getting used to the time crunch you're going to have during step one. But I would say that if you do want to do tutor mode early on, it's not a terrible idea. And so that's, that could be a good thing if you like tutor mode. Uh, you may want to try a couple blocks and see how you like it. But really, definitely do random to find where your weaknesses are. And the last piece of advice I have is that you should make an Anki gem for each incorrect that you have. So every time you get a question wrong on your world, you need to find the one key piece of information which caused you to get that question wrong. And then you'll make an Anki flashcard out of that. And that's what I'm calling the gem that you found. You can make more flashcards if you would like from each incorrect, but I found that this is a good way for you not to burden yourself too heavily by making so many cards out of each incorrect. By just focusing on making at least one card per incorrect, you're really going to capture the key point that you needed to learn from that card. And I also found that this really prevents you from having to do your incorrects again later. A lot of people like to go back after they finished a full passive view world and do all of their incorrects. 
And so when I finished UWorld, I actually went and did some of my incorrects. And I realized that I remembered every single one of them, and it was kind of a waste of my time because I had already had all these flashcards on them and had been doing them during my entire dedicated period. So the incorrects were very easy for me to remember and get correct. I think this is a huge time saver and a, a really good way for you to continue re reviewing the things you got wrong to prepare you for your actual step one exam. Okay, in regards to doing Anki, what you're going to be doing is whatever cards you were doing from before. So if you were working on Zanki, I would continue doing those reviews. If you still have a bunch of Zanki to finish, I wouldn't spend too much time doing more new cards. And I definitely wouldn't recommend anybody start like a new deck for Dedicated. Just do whatever cards and do the reviews that you're doing from before. And they shouldn't be too much of a burden because uh, the reviews will be spaced out pretty far since they're already mature cards. Um, you're going to be doing your U-World gems that you made from each incorrect. And then you will also want to consider changing your learning intervals for getting more repetitions in and aiming for a higher retention rate, say 90 to 95%. If you watched my guide to Anki intervals and settings, you know that I had learning steps of one day six days and 15 days and my goal retention was 80 to 90 percent okay so that's for long-term retention for your step one you kind of want to be maximizing your short-term retention a little bit more so I think it is totally reasonable to do something like one day three day seven day uh, or one day four day ten day as a third option you could even do one day three day six day 15 day okay those are all options that you could consider for your learning steps and this will help you get higher rep repetitions on the new cards you made as well you should target around a 90 percent retention i think would be a very fine target for your step one studying i highly recommend downloading some kind of audio podcast this is going to be really useful because whenever you're working out or you're walking or doing grocery shopping folding laundry washing the dishes you can just pop on a podcast and get some extra studying done in a pretty casual and relaxed manner. I really, really enjoyed using Golgen or Golian. He is a pretty well-known step one podcast person. Uh, his material at this point is almost 20 years old, so it's pretty old, but it actually is still pretty updated for what the step one board exam is going to be teaching you. And he explains things very, very well. He's a funny guy to listen to. I highly recommend listening to him. But if not, listening to any other podcast that you find to your liking, I think is a pretty nice way to get some extra studying done while you're doing other productive things. I think the only thing I remember that wasn't quite up to date was him not being sure that troponins were going to be the best marker for ACS uh, back then. But I, other than that, I really can't recall too many things that were outdated. In regards to practice tests, so I think you should do all of the available NBMEs. Back when I was doing it, it was like NBME 15 to 18, so I did all four of those. I, I heard that recently several more new ones just came out. So I would do all of the new ones and then do a couple of the old ones if your school hasn't already had you to do those already. And what's very important is you should go over all of your incorrects. And a lot of people skip this step because NBME does not provide answer explanations. And you kind of have to go Google sleuthing uh, in order to find the answers. But I highly recommend going over that because these are the same questions that are written by the same people who write step one. So they're going to be testing similar concepts on the actual step one exam and they're also going to be asking them in similar ways. So it is extremely high yield to go over the incorrects, even though you don't have the answer explanations provided by NBME themselves. So I really suggest that everybody should be doing this step, going over the incorrects. Another thing I'd like to mention is that there are some, uh, there I may have heard there are some offline versions of the NBME that you can find for download and you can do those. It's not going to provide you the actual step score prediction, but you can calculate that using some calculators. But this is a good way to save $60 on the MBMEs because they're already costing so much money just to take all these exams and get all the study material. So if you 
are willing to not see your predicted score, I think getting the offline versions is a very good option for you. Another thing that everybody needs to do but not everybody knows about is the free 120. This is a set of 120 questions written by the NBME and it is using the software that step one is tested on. So this is actually huge. Not only is it high yields because it's free 120 questions for you to do and I had at least three or four of these same questions almost word for word show up on my step exam. But because you're getting practice with the actual step software, this is a huge thing that you should use about a week before your exam. So you can get used to the software and be comfortable on the test day. Uh, another thing is, once you do the tutorial on the free 120 website, you can skip the tutorial on your test day. And that'll allow you to have uh, plus 15 minutes of break during your actual step exam, which is huge because it's a long and tiring exam. So plus 15 minutes to your break time by skipping the tutorial is a huge deal. You can find the answers on this guy's website, benwhite.com. So if you go here, you can find the explanations for the 2018 step one practice questions. And in here, he goes through all the answers with a short explanation, which is extremely useful. Um, and you can even go back and do the previous year's free 120s. Uh, they re release a new set every two years. So if you're interested in that, you can definitely consider doing all of the free 120s that have been put out in the past. If you just search uh, step one free 120, you, you will get to this page. And everything here is going to be the exact same as how it looks on your actual test. Okay. Another thing I want to talk about is just uh, creating a schedule. So a lot of people like to create a schedule just to track how many questions they're going to be doing and what their goals are for each day. Um, I just made this from scratch, but I saw other people with very similar setups, which I think I probably based this format off of. As you can see, um, I kind of had a plan for what I was going to do every day, but to be honest, I did not really follow it that much uh, because reviewing UWorld took a lot more time than I had anticipated most days. Uh, and one big thing I want to say is you definitely should be scheduling yourself some break time, exercise time, and just time to hang out and relax. You don't want to burn yourself out too much, so have at least one or at least a half day that's completely empty of studying per week. Another thing is, you, as you may notice, I had many, many days where I did not achieve what I wanted to. Uh, I didn't do enough questions, I did zero questions, uh, or I only did 40. And sometimes it can get really easy to beat yourself up for not doing the amount of questions that you plan to that day. But I just say self-care is really important, so you need to be taking care of yourself during Dedicated. You know, stuff happens, and as long as you continue getting back onto the, the train of studying, uh, you will do fine and you will achieve your goal. So I, I would say don't beat yourself up too much. And the last thing I just want to say is before you take step one, I definitely would take a day off beforehand. Definitely get some kind of physical activity in the day before so you can sleep well. Try not to schedule so many practice tests right before because it kind of can burn you out a little bit. I mean, just give yourself adequate time to, to relax a little bit uh, and do some light studying before step one. Oh, and one more thing that I wanted to talk about is when going through UWorld, should you read the full answer explanations or not? I remember when I was studying for step one, I was told to read the full answer explanation for every single question. And while I do think that is a fine appro approach uh, and you'll get a lot of good information from it, I think sometimes I would honestly lose concentration and lose focus uh, because the answers are very, very long sometimes. And so I think going for a more targeted approach is actually pretty good. If you go through UWorld and you get something incorrect, I would probably read through the whole answer explanation for an incorrect question. But if you get something correct, kind of just read through the little answer summary at the very end and read through any answer choices that you might not have known. But otherwise, feel free to skip through things a little bit and not have to read the entire paragraphs long explanation uh, for things that you actually got right and don't need to spend as much time on. I think that'll help you stay focused and concentrated more because you're going to be reading more high yield information. And so I think that's a good approach to uh, reading answer explanations. All right, and that's it for this video. Uh, if you have any questions, please ask below. And I hope this was helpful for some of you. And thanks for watching.